everyone, welcome to Lion Hermit Crab Educational Center. My name is Jessica and today we're going to be talking about surface molting. Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about surface molting. What are the signs to look for? What should we do if we find ourselves in that situation? So typically molting happens underground, under the substrate. Um, every hermit crab does need to molt. As they grow, they need to shed their old exoskeleton. So it's completely normal. Sometimes we might find ourselves in a situation where our hermit crab um, doesn't have the option to go underground uh, for some reason. For example, it could be that you just purchased your hermit crab from a beach shop or a pet store and you've brought them home and a few days, maybe even a couple of weeks into um, their PPDS. Um, which is shallow substrate. If you don't know what PPDS is, please um, go check that video out. I explain exactly what it is and how to go about it if you need to. Now, during this time, it's very crucial for the hermit crab. Sometimes they will um, do a surface molt during this time. So um, molting is stressful and very hard on the hermit crab, regardless if it's underground or above ground even more above ground just because they feel vulnerable to anything and everything around them. Okay guys, so if you find yourself in a situation with surface molters, you're going to need certain supplies. You wanna make sure that you have everything you need so if that time comes, you can just think fast and act fast, okay? So I'm gonna go over some supplies that you will need. One would be a two liter bottle. Okay, so this two liter bottle will be for isolation inside the tank, depending on the situation. We'll go over that in a minute. You're going to cut out the bottom of the two liter uh, soda bottle. You're going to take off the lid. You're not going to use the lid. This is the portion of the isolation tank that you're going to put inside your tank. You're going to need gloves. A hermit crab's abdomen is very um, fragile, um, especially when they are molting. When a crab is molting, they shed their exoskeleton, so they're not hard. And you want to avoid touching them altogether. If you can avoid touching them, then you will. It, it's the best thing to do. Um, they are fresh and they're soft, so by touching them with your hands or with anything that has chemicals, can cause an infection. So we want to try to minimize contact with the hermit crab during this time, especially during molting. Um, you're going to need either a container like this. You're, make, you're gonna make sure that you put lots of holes throughout. You can even put them uh, on the rim of the container, or you can use a little critter keeper um, this is what I have as an isolation tank, okay? Um, I have lots of holes on the lid, which is great. And you're going to need some um, moisten sphagnum moss, okay? So this is just a bag of sphagnum moss. This you can find um, on Amazon. As long as it's natural, sphagnum moss, it, sphagnum moss is not green it is a beige color. So this, this brand I bought at Home Depot, it's great because it was just a few dollars and it has, it's a, a big container. So now you're just going to moisten it with primed water. You want to make sure that your, your moss is pretty um, moist. And you're going to, I'm gonna show you how to set up the isolation tank. Um, during this time but these are the these are the things you're going to need you're also going to need a plastic spoon um, something a, a small one a kitchen um, plastic spoon this is something I purchased just for this uh, particular situation or for my naked crab it's always good to have everything together just in case you find yourself in an emergency situation okay so those are the items that you will need Okay, so how do we know our hermit crab is getting ready to surface molt? Or how do we know if our crab is dead? 
So now these signs can be very similar to a dead crab, and we want to make sure that we're very attentive to these signs. If we have a camera, it is perfect because we can sit it by the tank and we can actually see closely. A, sh a surface molter will, when they're shedding their exoskeleton, have small little movements. Um, they're like little twitches. So, and it's not all the time, it's periodically. So we have to keep a good close eye in order to see those movements. But things to look for. Um, they have been misinterpreted plenty of times and we have found that the crab was actually getting ready to molt and the owner thought that he was dead and tossed him into the garbage can and then heard something and found the crab. So we want to make sure that we are attentive with these signs and that does not happen to us. If we don't smell a small, a strong, fishy odor from the crab, then we can't assume that he is dead. Right away, let's assume that he is getting ready to surface molt. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, these things can happen during PPDS and it's very common. We see it quite often because they don't have the, 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 the depth of the substrate. They can't actually go down to, to uh, molt. So signs to look for. Stiffness. Um, hermit crabs will lose their balance or ability to hold themselves up or sit up they, during the molting process. Hermit crabs have a gland in between their eye stalks that release a chemical during the molting process, which paralyzes them. So they're unable to stand up or hold themselves up. It's like playing dead. So those are signs to look for. Stiffness, halfway out of his shell, or laying down on his side, or even um, hunched back. So sometimes we'll see the crab, the shell actually sitting up and he's hunched over. Those are signs to look for a surface molder. So we want to make sure that we're attentive to these um, signs and we act fast. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we want to make sure that we have everything we need, whether it's for a surface molter or for a naked crab. Okay, guys, so now you found your surface molter. You want to make sure that you put your gloves on first before proceeding with any of this. Okay, you want to minimize the contact with your hermit crab you, to avoid any infection. So let's just say that this is your main tank. I can't use mines because I have molters in mine. But let's just say that this is your tank. You have your surface molter and you have... Um, your crabs are all accounted for. You were able to look in your tank and make sure that everyone is there and this is your surface molter and no one is molting under the substrate, okay? So let's just say we've already um, counted them. They're all there and they're above the substrate. So now you have, you're going to take your two liter bottle, you're going to cut the bottom like I mentioned before and you're going to remove the cap, okay? So this is going to go all the way down into your substrate and you're going to isolate him in this, in this container, okay, in this bottle. So you want to make sure that you are not touching him in any way and you're pushing this bottle all the way to the bottom of the substrate as far as you can go, okay? If it does not go down all the way, then it's going to be useless. Your other hermit crabs can burrow underneath the substrate and can cannibalize him. You want to avoid that completely. A surface molter, any molter, they do smell yummy to the other crabs. They smell fishy. So you want to isolate him and protect him from everyone else in the tank. So you want to make sure that you've pushed it all the way as far down as you can. So now in a different scenario, you have your surface molter and you know that you have molting crabs underneath the substrate. So now the bottle method is not 
good to use for the simple fact because you can hurt another molting crab that's below so you cannot put anything into the substrate so now you definitely have to um, uh, safely isolate your molting crab so you want to make sure that you put your gloves on like i mentioned you want your spoon your plastic spoon it's better if you have a plastic spoon because it's soft on the crab and it won't injure them okay you're going to get your critter keeper depending on what fits inside your tank you want to um, get your critter keeper or your um, small isolation container make sure that you have lots of holes throughout the tank so that he can get the proper air inside the container okay it has to be something big enough to put him in i am going to use this isolation container which is a pretty much the size of a small critter keeper okay and i am going to moisten my moss it's going to be pretty damp you don't want any water on your hermit crab during the molting process you want to make sure that you don't give them any water you don't add any water to this just because water can cause them an infection they are fresh and they're very uh, soft so you want to make sure that there's no water at the bottom of this or even in the isolation uh, tank or container you're going to be using all that you need is the moistened moss inside the little container if he needs some moisture he will um, uh, pick at the moss okay so now we are going to go into our tank in this scenario because we have molting crabs under here so the bottle method would not work for us so we have molting crabs in this tank so we cannot do that and then we also have other crabs that are in the tank so to 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 protect him we want to safely um isolate him so you're going to need your plastic spoon remember to wear your gloves and we're going to go in and we're going to scoop underneath the substrate so we're going to grab some substrate so that we are not touching him in any way okay and we're going to put the container very close to us okay i want you guys to see so we're going underneath and we're going to gently scoop him up we're going to use two hands okay very carefully even with the substrate okay and we're just going to gently use two hands and we're going to put the substrate inside the container right along with him just like this okay and we're going to close it up make sure that like i mentioned before there's lots and lots of holes and you're going to put the same container back inside the tank because he does need the heat and the humidity that everyone else has in here so now let's just say that you have um, your hermit crab your surface molter and he's the only crab in the tank you don't need to move him you're going to leave him there okay so that he can uh, de-stress and do what he has to do focus on uh, gaining his strength um, he is going to be going through some quite a bit of stress during this time. So we want to minimize um, any contact in all scenarios. We want to make sure that we're not always up against the glass and watching. If you have a camera, that will be perfect because you can watch from far um, without having to um, present yourself in front of the glass and take pictures and stress him out during this this time so we want to minimize contact with him in all ways if you're going to come and take a picture then that's fine just don't use any flash try to minimize like i said minimize is, is the key because we want him to not stress so much this is already stressful for him and we want to um, let him do his thing now in this scenario we don't have to do anything you can put um the moistened moss next to him somewhere so if he does need um some moisture then he can drink from the moss now during this time if he is in your tank i'm sure you have pools salt and freshwater pools you don't want salt water in your pools for the simple fact because it can cause an infection if he does wet his exoskeleton that is still very soft and very fragile 
um, he can get an infection. So you might want to remove the salt water from your, um, from your pools. You can put fresh primed water um, because you just might need to keep the humidity up in your tank. So uh, fresh water is fine. You want to just leave it just a, um, a small amount of water. You don't want something that he can fully submerge in. Something small. If you want to do a standing still dish, that's fine. But it's better if you have something with bubblers or filtered just because you don't have to go in and out of the tank so often and stress him out. So um, the fresh water would be perfect um, for this. Just prime it. Um, and leave it there so you can maintain the heat and the humidity inside the tank just like you do all the time. Now, during this process, it's going to take a while. We can't say how long it's going to take this hermit crab to shed his exoskeleton. Um, once you see that he is starting to um, uh, budge a little, it's like a little shake here and there, then you know that he is going to start to shed his exoskeleton. Okay, so this process is going to be quite lengthy. We can't say how long it's going to take him to actually shed his exoskeleton. So this process might take a while. We have to just trust the process and let him do what he has to do. Um, most of the time, they won't eat all of their exoskeleton. They will most likely leave um, the big pincer uh, behind just because it is the hardest part of his exo. Um, some crabs do eat one side of it and leave the other. Um, it all depends on the crab. So we want to make sure that they are eating um, most of their exoskeleton. No food is needed inside their tanks or in their isolation container um, during this process. We want to just let him eat his exoskeleton. He's going to be losing a lot of protein and calcium that he has um, taken in before molting. So everything that he has taken in during this time uh, before molting, he is losing it during this process. So we want to make sure that he's taking in everything he's lost. So that's why we say it's very important for them to eat their exoskeleton. So we have to let him be and take, let him take his time doing it. Now, this process, you might have pools inside your tank, like I mentioned. So you want to make sure that it, they're shallow dishes. If he needs to drink something, that's fine. And he has the fresh water. But during this time, he might not be mobile. He will be in the same spot because that's what they usually do. We have to keep in mind that this is this process is usually done underground. So it usually takes place underground under the, the substrate. So in that time, they're not roaming or anything like that. They're just focusing on shedding their exoskeleton, eating it, and regaining their strength. So how do you know when to add them back into your main tank with all of the rest of your crabs? So you, what you're going to look for is, one, you're going to make sure that he has eaten most of his exoskeleton. When I say most, I mean almost all of it. Hermit crabs might leave their pincer behind, it might leave little pieces behind. That's fine. Once you see that they have eaten most of their exoskeleton, also number two, when you see them that they're active and moving around in the tank, once you see that they have eaten most of their exoskeleton, it's okay to add um, other things besides their staples. So now you can add proteins and calciums, um, things like that, so that he can eat as well. Now, if he is active and he is eating, then that's a good sign. Now, your third sign, which is a big one, is if they don't look fresh anymore. How do you know if they look fresh? Well, if your hermit crab looks pink, then you know that their exoskeleton has not hardened. So you want to make sure that he is not looking pink anymore, that he has most of his color back, active, eating, and their color. Once you see all those three things are are good, then he is set to go back into your main tank. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind that just like a regular molting crab, when they come up from um, molting, there is a pecking order that can happen. Not in all cases. 
you have to keep in mind that during this time they still smell pretty um uh, delicious to the other crabs um so there might be um some pecking order you want to stand by um and keep an eye and look and see what's going on it might not happen or or it could happen we want, want to make sure that we're prepared and we have plenty of shells on the substrate before you do add them into the tank. Several food dishes so that they can see that it's not anything they have to fight for. You want to make sure that your crab has plenty of uh, resources so that they can just be distracted. Lots of um, enrichment items so that they can um, wonder and not even pay mind to the other crab. So those are the things you're going to look for. So we want to make sure that we have all these items for a naked crab, like I mentioned, or even a surface molter somewhere near your tank or storage bin so that you can be prepared for these situations when they happen. So now we covered everything. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to comment below or even follow us on our facebook groups we'll be happy to give you some one-on-one -on -one help there please don't forget to like and subscribe and share my videos i hope you guys enjoyed this video and it was helpful